So that's what I was saying that this result is very powerful because it really gives an easy check. Yeah, if I have k vector fields in the distribution, I just have to check their combinations. Yeah, so k c two, and you are done. Okay, and I check that their combinations belong to the distribution, and you are good to go. Okay, proof. Of course, whenever we do something, you have to prove. It's an if and only if, so you have to prove both sides. first suppose if you that you have involutivity if you have involutivity then this is obvious right because involutivity means that if f1 to fk belong to delta then their lie brackets have to be in delta so this is obvious by in you know that if you are starting with involutivity obviously this will happen no problem the bigger question is if you start with this that only their combinations are in delta then can you claim that the distribution is involutive as per this definition okay how do we go about it we take some two vector fields okay g1 and g2 in delta okay. now the important thing is because g1 and g2 are in delta and that happens at all points they sh you should be able to write them as a linear combination of the fi's as the only way g1 and g2 can belong to delta right because they have to be the linear combination of the fi's right and of course these fi ij's are smooth functions yeah smoothness is coming uh, out of the fact that fi fj's are also smooth yeah and g1 g1 g2 are also smooth okay therefore this coefficients have to be smooth okay so it's everything is smooth so the coefficients also have to be smooth okay for simplicity if you assume k equal to 2 that is you have uh, only two vector fields here f1 and f2 forming the distribution just for so that the proof looks easy yeah then what do you have you have that the lie bracket of g1 g2 is actually this guy lie bracket of this okay because i have written g1 as 5 1 1 f1 plus 5 1 2 f2 And g2 is phi 2 1 f1 plus phi 2 2 f2, right? Because g1 g2 belong to the distribution, right? Now I want to compute this Lie bracket. Okay. Now there is a problem with this computation. Okay. So I want you to actually this is another exercise. I need you to complete this computation. This is computation is pretty straightforward. It is just doing this. With some coefficients, phi one i f i plus phi two j f j. Hey, remember, phi one i and phi two j are depending on x. Hey, they're just fun they're functions. They're not just, yeah, they're not just uh, constants or anything. Okay, all right. So I wanted to prove this computation anyway. But let's look at the Lie bracket of g one and g two as per this expression. Okay, it is known that the Lie brackets are distributed. I have not talked about this. but it's easy to prove that they distribute that is i can break this open how in all these four terms yeah this works like a nice distributive bracket term. okay so from g1 g2 i'll get phi11 phi21 f1 f1 first term then i'll get phi11 phi22 f1 f2 second phi12 phi21 f2 f1 And phi one two phi two two f two f two. Now it should be obvious to you that the Lie bracket of a vector field with itself is zero. Just yeah, zero. Okay, so these two are gone. Okay, these two are gone. So what am I left with? I'm left with. these two okay and uh, these are actually the same term i can actually flip the sign so also this is another thing that's true lie bracket is anti symmetric so f1 f2 lie bracket is negative of f2 f1 lie bracket yeah so i can flip the sign 
So what am I left with? I am left with something rather simple, right? It is yeah, this is my G1, G2, okay, okay. Now, what have I assumed? That F1, F2 belongs to delta, yes, yes, which means what? G1, G2 also belongs to delta, why? Because it is just a scalar multiple of F1, F2. Yeah, no. What do I have to prove for invariability? Take arbitrary two vectors, vector fields in the distribution and prove that their Lie bracket is in the distribution. Yes, what does it mean to be in the distribution? They are their linear combinations of the forming vector fields. Okay, I have assumed that there are only two vector fields, forming vector fields, yeah, or generator vector fields, which is F1 and F2. So, G1 and G2 if they are in delta means G1 can be written as phi 1 1 F1 plus phi 1 2 F2 and G2 can be written as phi 2 1 F1 and phi 2 2 F2. Hmm? Notice phi 1 phi 1 1 phi 1 2 phi 2 1 phi 2 2 are functions of x but scalars, they are not changing the vector direction. Hmm? This is in the direction of F1, this is in the direction of F2, it is like multiplying a scalar and a vector and just that here. It is not just scalars, it is a scalar function. Similarly, it is not just vectors, it is a vector field. That is it. Okay. So, phi 1 1 f 1 is in the direction of f 1, phi 1 2 f 2 is in the direction of f 2. Similarly, phi 2 1 f 1 is in the direction of f 1 and phi 2 2 f 2 is in the direction of f 2. Okay. The important thing to remember about Lie bracket is that they distribute nicely. That is what I have used. I have just broken open the bracket just like you would break open any product, works exactly like this, yeah. So I get 4 terms, now out of these 2 terms have same, you know, f1, f1 and f2, f2, okay. Just because the Lie bracket is anti-symmetric, this structure, this is 0. If you put, if g and f are the same, this is actually the 0, the, you know, becomes a 0 vector field. Hmm? So this guy is 0, this guy is 0, I am left with f1, f2 and f2, f1 and so that is negative, so f1, f2 is negative of f2, f1 again by anti-symmetry. So all I have left is this entire guy, okay and this is just a scalar, yeah, fine, scalar function but still a scalar, not changing the direction of the vector, yeah. And I have already assumed that F1, F2 belongs to the distribution. So I am done, G1, G2 belongs to the distribution now. Hmm? Now if I had assumed instead of 2 Fs, there were many more or K generating Fs yeah, or say 3, what would happen? I will get 3, 5, 1, 1, 5, 1, 2, 5, 1, 3, 5, 2, 1, 5, 2, 2, 5, 3, 3. But I will still get combinations of these and repetitions. Combinations, repetitions and the combinations are already assumed to be in the distribution, repetitions are dying, so therefore I will always remain in that, okay, so straightforward actually, yeah, you do not have to worry too much, yes, good point, I was also wondering, one should always ask oneself, are we using all the assumptions? A non-singular distribution, uh, if delta is a non-singular distribution, then involutivity if and only if, okay, 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 okay. You know, what, so, so what you are asking is that where do we use the non-singularity of the distribution, alright. Now, you know, this is where I think the problem will happen, this place. I think this equality is no longer writable. is what I am wondering or, or am I wrong? I think this, this equality is where I will have 
start having trouble yeah i have to think about it more carefully but i believe this equality you will not be able to write anymore because if your distribution is changing rank the span is changing rank now the span definitely has to hold the vector because we are assuming that gi is in delta so obviously the span has to hold the vector but my feeling is you will not be able to do it with smooth functions here yeah if you suddenly want to jump uh, from one point p to another point p prime you go from a three dimensional distribution to a two dimensional distribution all right because it's singular then this phi will undergo a rather drastic change i do not think you will be able to retain smooth uh, phi's anymore I, again i have to think about this more carefully but this is where i think things will go wrong this assignment will not lead to smooth functions phi but that's a good point i'll try to hunt it up huh that's also the next question i was asking myself <laughs> all right um where are we using the smoothness of the functions phi see when i look at this without a smooth phi um this is poorly defined fine i wrote this as this split and all this all right um but if i try to actually compute this guy by this formula you can see i'm starting to take partials of the phi's hmm? and here so this is poorly defined so even writing like this is not a uh, not okay hmm? because i mean eventually all the bracket operations are you know, these are all derivatives of some kind or the other so i'm frequently taking derivatives yeah i will definitely mess up i mean this 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 is not a good i mean not a well defined object anymore yeah so it almost certainly i believe what i'm saying is right that uh, non singularity will result in these phi's becoming non smooth hmm? because you can't just jump rank and expect that everything will turn out to remain smooth hmm? this will definitely create some trouble you are suddenly you know uh, projecting to a plane say you are in three dimensions suddenly you are projecting to a plane yeah or in five dimensions to a four dimensional hyperplane or a three dimensional hyperplane that will not retain good values of the phi hmm? i mean yeah i mean as of now whatever i'm saying is imagination it's nicer to if we can construct if we can construct and uh, sort of evaluate yeah but i believe that's what will go wrong okay i'll check anyway if i can find some fun examples yeah all right so here i'm just giving some example of this normal form business okay uh, uh, this is again going back to the previous uh, topic but anyway let's let's just look at this yeah so this is sort of the system yeah and i want to put this in normal form you can see it's already non linear and messy i am using y as x2 all right i'm using y output as x2 and i want to get this to normal form how do i do this i simply start taking derivatives right first to get the relative degree right because anyway the y and its derivatives become my states my my linear states right so the first state is x2 itself then i take a derivative and i you know get to x2 dot which is x3 right and then i take another derivative y double dot which is x3 dot which gives me the control okay so this is a relative degree what system what's the relative degree of this system 2 yeah it's 2 i also written it here yeah, i took two derivatives of the output whatever output i was given i took two derivatives i reached the control so obviously my first two states become this guy yeah that is y and its derivative those become my first two states or the last two states then i need to find the phi state right which will make it a diffeomorphism suppose i choose this guy x1 hmm? this is a problem 
because the derivative of x1 contains the control so i don't like it so much because it's not going to give me the normal form now what do i need for the normal form if you remember i need uh, l yeah i've actually written it here i need lg phi equal to 0 right so that there is no control term appearing so right so what is lg phi lg phi is basically partial of phi with multiplied by g what is g g is basically whatever is multiplying the control right so that's 2 plus x3 1 plus x3 whatever 2 plus x3 square 1 plus x3 square 0 and 1 this guy so if i compute this product i get this i can actually break this open to get 1 plus x3 square this del phi del x1 del phi del x3 okay now i want this to be zero okay and I'm, i want to use this to motivate my new state okay so i've of course chosen it like this yeah pretty scary looking actually how do you think i came with this? so this is my phi right this is what i chose as phi how do you think i came up with this i did some guesswork all right so if you look at this guy yeah um, this looks like tan inverse derivative of tan inverse x3 right this looks like derivative of tan inverse x3 so if i uh, keep x1 as linear right i get del phi del x1 as 1 right and then i get del phi del x3 as 1 over 1 plus x3 squared yeah 1 over 1 plus x3 squared and then this guy is again just multiplying del phi del x1 which is 1 so these two will cancel out and i'm left with i apologies did i get this right yeah yeah and this and part of this will cancel out this is basically del phi del x3 is going to give me minus 1 minus 1 over 1 plus x3 square okay uh, so i did a little bit of guesswork uh, how would you do it if i wanted to guess a phi starting from this equation is there any other smarter way i i thought did just bunch of guesswork i just looked at what i can cancel is there any nicer way if you can that you can think of to sort of arrive at this no because individually i can't say that individually these are zero or something like that it's not a quadratic or anything so i can't say that individually these are zero or some such right uh, one thing that's obvious to me is that i don't have the this e entire equation has only x1 and x3 so i don't need the phi to depend on x2 that much is obvious to me my phi doesn't have to depend on x2 because it is playing no role in this entire equation right so phi is only a function of x1 and x3 is all i know yeah i think to me it seems this is what works fine okay and anyway if i choose this funny looking coordinate i get z1 dot as this z2 dot as z3 and z3 dot as this z1 z3 plus u Oh no, it won't work. Uh, x1 minus tan inverse x3, is it? So, so del phi del x1 will be 1 and del phi del x3 will be minus 1 over 1 plus x3 squared. So, this will be 1, 1 over 1 plus x3 squared and this will be 1 over 1 plus x3 squared. So, 1 remains, no? So, I am trying to cancel the 1 also. That is why I put the minus x3 here. I must have tried with that only, but then I added the minus x3 because I have to cancel the 1 also. Okay, that's it. Yeah, it's just a little bit of hidden trial. Okay, but this is what you get as the dynamics. You still get nice enough zero dynamics, by the way, if you see. Yeah, because if the linear part goes to 0, this guy is 0, and this is again an exponentially stable system okay so again started with something complicated and very non-linear not evident how i would design a control based on any method that i know 
yeah but i still end up with something rather nice okay oh this one i'll huh? i guess is already in your notes why is this exercise then what oh, i see apparently it's not exercise i have already solved it so it's already in your notes that i uploaded so so i should probably just not say this is an exercise right? solved yeah because you can see that it's here i mean i've actually done it anyway you can take a look at this yeah you can take a look at this in your leisure time this whatever expression you get here yeah i believe this expression has a problem this expression has a problem so anyway so i i, I got to this expression i'm not sure why i'm saying this is specialized to k equal to 2 doesn't seem like this is k equal to 2 is necessary here yeah it seems it's specialized to k equal to 2 yeah because otherwise there would be summations and stuff that's all all right okay anyway this is something you can just look at it on your own all right so anyway next time we'll continue with our discussion on frobenius theorem all right okay all right we'll stop there thank you